this is a warning for this video. If you want a video that is like straightforward and to the point and actually like has a legit point, <laughs> this is not the video for you. Click away, watch something else. This video is like just me trying to get my shit together and actually make something. So the first like 30 seconds or a minute is literally just me sitting there trying to figure out what the hell I'm trying to talk about. Cause I did not know what I was gonna talk about going into this video. It's just a way for me to get back into the habit of making this video and breaking that spell of not having to put out a video. So there's your warning. Uh, it's like 15 minutes long. I do get into talking about some semi-interesting things maybe uh, towards the end, um, like second half. <laughs> so <laughs> fast forward if you want, or if you actually want a video that like has a point and is uh, not trying to waste your time, maybe watch something else. <laughs> I have other videos that are a little more directed. Uh, so check those out. But yeah, hope you enjoy this one. Anyways, if you uh, would like to just sit here and watch me ramble. Bye. Hola. I don't have anything to say. Hello. My name's Ryan. <laughs> huh. I've been into personal development for a very long time. I think it started officially with reading, I don't know, 16 I think it was, uh, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. I think it was the first real self-development book that I read. And the point of that book was basically, don't be an egotistical asshole and think you have everything figured out. The point of, well, like, the way that you progress in life and the way that you really become a top tier anything is being humble and accepting that you don't know anything and coming from a place of genuine curiosity and humility and accepting that people know more than you. And even if you know more than them in some other areas, to be humble and learn to grow in the areas that they're stronger than you. Rather than trying to brag about your own strengths in your areas, every single person has something that they're stronger in than you. Like, I could be a better drummer than someone else, but maybe they play guitar and they could kick my ass in a guitar shredding battle. Instead of me trying to brag and you know validate my self-worth by talking about how good of a drummer I am, maybe I really start asking them about guitar. Tell them, oh, I've always wanted to learn guitar. It's been such like a little dream of mine to learn how to play guitar and drums. I'm gonna really ask this person a lot of questions about guitar and have them teach me about guitar and just be a total newbie and beginner and be okay with that and not have that say something negative about my self-worth. You know, like true confidence comes from not needing to always prove that you're capable. Being an egotistical asshole basically means you're so insecure about your own self-worth you have to constantly prove it to other people. So coming from a place of humility means that you're so confident that you, you don't need to tie up your self-worth in being good at everything. You can accept that you're not good at pretty much everything. You're okay at a very small amount of things. And you suck at everything else. And having pride in that, and being okay with that, and using that to ask questions and be humble and learn more from other people. That was my interpretation of the book anyways. Anyways, that book got me on this journey of self-development of wanting to be a better version of myself, trying to improve myself so I could be better for me, better for the people around me, my girlfriend at the time, my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, and really trying to work on myself and like work my own issues out so that I could be better for other people. Maybe I didn't know that's why I was doing it at the time, but when I look back, I think that was at least one of the reasons. And that was started at maybe 16, 16 or 17, and I'm 21 now, still a baby, but after being on that journey for a good four or five years, I catch myself being somewhat unmotivated to improve myself anymore, or at least to really treat it as an ambition and something that needs to be done. 
I reached this point a few months ago or so, back when I was living in Hawaii, and I just became so content and satisfied with my life and where I was and who I was and what I had achieved, what I was going on to do, what the future held for me. I just became so satisfied with that. And I was so happy and content every day just to like enjoy the littlest things like going for a swim or going to hang out with my friends. That was beautiful to me. And I stopped being so interested in and obsessed with this idea of self-development and even philosophy. And a lot of my curiosity for it's the humanities or improvements. I don't want to just use the term self-improvement, but this idea of like betterment and being better and striving for more. Instead, I reached this equanimity with where I was and who I was and what I'd done and what I was yet to do. And I didn't feel rushed. I felt very at peace. And that was a few months ago or so. And over a few months, that the strength of that feeling has definitely wavered in and out. There have been times I've definitely caught myself sinking back into, or slipping back in, or returning to that mindset of ambition and thinking about the future and prioritizing the future. But I think on the whole, my approach of, or my attitude of equanimity or acceptance, contentment, has remained rather strong throughout it. And it kind of makes it difficult for me to really get into a lot of philosophical ideas. Because I'm kind of at this point where I don't care so much about ideas. I care about the day to day. Like, what does your life actually look like? What are your experiences? And really just being fully immersed in those experiences. Even if these experiences are somewhat average, there's this idea that I still want to explore more, but it's basically along the lines of, really, your external circumstances don't matter nearly as much as you think they do. We all think they do. You can be doing a mundane, average task and living a mundane, average life by very many metrics and be one of the happiest people alive because your mindset and your mental state and your approach to doing those things is so radically different from the average person. I've caught myself so, so, so much, like every single day since I really, not in the beginning, but after meditating for, I don't know, three years or so-ish, like every single day almost, you become much more aware of your mind and what kind of thoughts you have. And I've just become so deeply aware that we spend so little time actually enjoying the thing that we were once looking forward to the most. Take an example of just eating a meal. You sit down and you've been looking forward to this meal like all day, maybe even walking around. Like I'm here in Mexico City, I like walk around the city a lot, right? I'm walking around, I'm thinking about getting food. It's like, oh yeah, I wanna grab some food here. So I'm walking around all day and finally I sit down to have a meal. I order some food, I order a beer or something like that. I sit down to enjoy it. <sighs> How quickly my mind moves on from enjoying that thing that I've been looking forward to all day to thinking about the next thing is amazing. I will sit down and maybe take one bite of the food and then I'll start thinking about like either the next bite or a, a different dish, or after I finish eating and drinking my beer, or after I finish my beer, I'll think about going home. And I'll think about going back and like chilling and like eating ice cream and watching a TV show or something like that. I'll, I'll immediately move on to the next thing. I won't spend hardly any time actually enjoying the thing that I'd spent the entire day looking forward to. All those hours walking around thinking about, oh, I can't wait till I'm done with walking around so I can eat food. And then when you're eating food, oh, I can't wait till I'm done eating food so I can drink that beer. And then when you're done with the beer, oh, I can't wait. 
Or before you're even done with the beer. When you're drinking the beer, I can't wait until I'm done with this beer so I can go home or something. Like, it's ridiculous how little we actually sit and enjoy our lives. It's amazing. And honestly, it's kind of been throwing me for not an existential crisis by any means, but this feeling of like, what are we doing? Like, where, where am I deriving fulfillment and satisfaction and actually sitting and enjoying my life? When am I doing that? When am I doing that versus how much I'm thinking about what I am going to do? I'm planning for the future. I'm thinking about all the things I will experience. And I will enjoy. And I'll enjoy that anticipation, that excitement, thinking about, I can't wait to do this thing. But how much, like, what's the ratio of that versus me actually sitting and enjoying a thing itself? It's like a pie chart. And the thinking is like 99.99% and the actual the enjoying is like a little sliver. And that screws with my head. That's like, what the hell? My life needs to be way more of just actually sitting and enjoying and being fully present and grateful and fulfilled by that moment. There's a fantastic meditation practice that I've been doing, trying to do more of, which is really like sitting in meditation and then just thinking like, is anything missing in this moment? Like what is missing in this moment for this moment to be perfect? Do I need like more food in my stomach? Do I need like, I don't know, someone around me? Do I need to be in a nicer house or something? Like, what is missing in this moment? Is there some kind of like formula that you could create that's not currently the case? Some formula that would create this perfect outcome of pristine contentment and fulfillment and happiness? The truth is no, there's no formula. There's no rearranging of your external circumstances that will create that inner state. You have to create that inner state yourself. You have to realize, holy shit, there's actually nothing missing right now in this moment. I will sit here in this exact chair right here, looking out this little window, and I'll go, wow, I'm thinking about all these things that I want to do. I'm thinking about all these problems that I supposedly have, right? That I probably actually don't have. I'm just creating for myself. And I'll think about all these things, but really, like, there's nothing critically missing in this moment. For me to be f completely fulfilled and satisfied by this moment, everything is here. I'm sitting here comfortably. I'm breathing. I don't have severe pain in, anywhere in my body. Like, I have enough food and water. There's nothing missing in this moment. And truly sitting in that is like transformational because if you're anything like me, you spend a lot of time in your head thinking about the future planning things for the future. What are you going to do? How are you going to deal with this situation? What are you going to have, uh, what kind of conversation are you going to have with this person when this problem comes up? Like, all these things. But you realize that like, you're creating all these problems for yourself in your head. <laughs> like, these things aren't actually occurring right now. They're not a problem right now. There are no problems right now. You're sitting here doing nothing. Life's fine. But then you go in your head. And you start thinking about all these things that could go wrong. How are you going to handle this situation if? What if this happens? What if that happens? And you create all these problems for yourself. Because we can't, we literally can't exist without problems. We will create problems for ourselves. The, the goal is not to escape problems. And when you have no problems, you will create new ones. I've experienced this in the last three or four weeks. As I've, you know achieved so my like dream lifestyle of just like digital nomad travel around do whatever the hell you want which is great by the way i'm not complaining but if you don't have any problems in your day-to-day -day, like you will create new ones you'll start thinking of these crazy like big big long-term so-called decisions you have to make and like what's your life purpose and all oh, like what are you going to do with your life and what do this plan or that plan yes or no it's like you don't have to decide any of that shit but at least my mind goes into that when there's a lack of immediate problems to solve. So there's no escaping problems. Like if, if you don't have any problems thrust on you, you will create problems yourself. Now, arguably that's a lot better position to be in. You should strive to be in a situation where you are, 
you get the option to create your own problems. It's a good goal. But realize that you're always gonna have problems. You're, the goal is not no problems, the goal is better problems. So kind of like using that as a reframe. This entire video has been like balls everywhere. <laughs> balls all over the place. I don't know what that saying means, but it feels right. Uh, I just wanted to put something out and I'm just tired of, I'm not tired, what am I tired of? I guess I'm tired of feeling like I copped out. I'm tired of feeling like I am not uh, staying true to my word to making videos or content or anything like that. And this video is just a, just trying to hold my ass to the flame and like force it out of me. I didn't have any idea what the hell I was gonna talk about when I pressed the record button. Um, but here we are after 15 minutes. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, that's my ram, random ramble. Um, I'm definitely putting a forewarning before this video. This is more or less pointless. But feel free to watch anyways. And yeah, this YouTube channel is more or less just a place for me to get random ideas out. I'm going to try, I'm really going to try not to take it too seriously. And yeah, just treat it as like a little personal playground. So if you enjoy it, cool. If you got this far in the video, I don't know who you are, but thank you. Anyways, that's all for me for today. And uh, thanks for watching. And hasta luego. See you next time, mi amigo. Don't talk Spanish. I'm not Spanish. <laughs>